Guys, I invited a friend to join us real quick. I figure we're talking WrestleMania. Get one of my favorite human beings in WWE. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Trish. Wow. Kofi wow. Is here. How are you, Kofi? What's up, man? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm cool, man. What's how's the uh, how are you physically doing? How's the family? Um, how are the boys? What's what's going on? Yeah, everything is great, man. Uh, everybody is healthy. Everybody is safe. You know, um, we've been kind of hold up like everybody else. You know, kind of keeping things pretty close. We might take walks through the woods because uh, my kids will not stay inside. Uh, <laughs> it's not healthy for anybody to have the be like the Tasmanian devil. You know, uh, the house will be completely ruined. So uh, every now and then we'll go out like in nature and just kind of walk through the forest because my wife is a big hippie and uh, that's what she likes to do. So it's been nice, man. Um, you know, I feel like my uh, glass half full situation is that um, like even though we're in this like weird, uncertain, like abnormal time, for me it's kind of like, you know, I've been spending so much time with my family that I almost feel like this sense of normalcy, right? Like where I don't normally get to be home with my family. I feel like I get to, you know, be like a regular parent who spends a lot of time with their children. It's very impressive. I remember when I was working at WWE and we, I saw you when the New Day was just beginning, when it was in its previous iteration, right? And it's like, here we are six years later and the New Day is still strong and people still love the New Day and you guys have found ways to reinvent and reinvent. Like, isn't it extremely impressive that we're still at a point where this, this faction, this group is so popular so many years later? Yeah, man, I don't want to toot my own horn, so I'm glad you did it uh, for me. But uh, we talk about that all the time. Like, we're always trying to find, like, what's next. You know, we went from Budio's cereal, then we moved on to ice cream. You know, we had our unicorn horns at one point. Uh, then we moved on to pancakes. And we've been talking about moving on, moving to something else for the past, like, year and a half, two years. But every time we go to the arena and everybody has all these, like, target signs like hey this is a pancake target hit me and you see him throughout the arena and there are we want pancake chants going on like now it's like man like you know they're still cheering for it well let's give them what they want so i think we're in a very unique situation and a very uh we're all grateful for being in the situation where we are still kind of able to reinvent ourselves i think we take a lot of pride in kind of having our finger on the pulse of pop culture you know, um, so we kind of incorporate that every single time that we go out there and, uh, you know, we're blessed with some TV time. So, um, yeah, it's it's crazy that it's been so long. We were just looking at uh, some stuff that we used to do online with the uh, WWE, um, with the app, you know, uh, online, <laughs> you know, uh, we used to do so many crazy like little skits. We were just trying to like find our footing and we're just going through a bunch of those like thinking about stuff to talk about for our podcast the new day feel the power plug plug which you can check out in these dire times like smiling and you know laughing you know we put smiles on people's <laughs> faces and laughed in their bellies you know let's talk about wrestlemania <laughs> though the new day in a, in a in a triple threat ladder match for the wwe yeah. smackdown tag team championships Miz and morrison are the champs the usos are involved as well my question is this like when I think about this, that is a match that I would assume you have to have a lot of adrenaline to be able to go through that match. It's crash and burn. It's high octane. And now you, got, uh, you and the other competitors have to put on this match with no one around to not be able to feed off the crowd, especially this one because it's a ladder match. Whatever you can share with us, Kofi, like to even think about putting together a match like this only for the audience at home, what's that like? It is very different. It's very different. Um, I don't think the putting together the match is really all that different because we know that there's going to be somebody watching it somewhere and uh, we want to put on the best match uh, possible. And then in terms of advancing our storylines and everything like that, we also want to be thinking about that when we put the match together. Uh, as far as the actual like physical participation in the match, it is very different, you know? Uh, being able to be having to go out there with no crowds, especially like us, we feed off the crowds. The new day is all about crowd participation. Um, but for us, like we, uh, you know, we, uh, a lot of times like we go out and we're just trying to entertain ourselves, you know? So uh, not that we don't need the crowd, but uh, we're able to kind of like settle in like the mass that we had with Ms. Uh, with uh, the Oost of Ms. Morrison on commentary on SmackDown last week was a good example of that, where it was very strange at first, 
But then after a while, you know, we're talking trash back and forth with the Usos. And, uh, like, we have such good chemistry with them that you can't help but get into the match, you know? We are so passionate in what it is that we do. And um, it's, it, it's, it's different, for sure. Definitely different. But um, the energy level is still there. Kofi, when I think back to, to last year's WrestleMania, and it's crazy how much has changed in the past year, right? You know, 70 plus thousand people at MetLife, and now you guys are doing it in, in an empty performance center. But when I think back to it, I think of your story and Becky's story, right? You guys were the two hottest stories going into that. You both win. Amazing way to, to end the show with Becky and your victory as well. I was lucky enough to be there, and the crowd reaction to you winning was incredible. Uh, last week, I, I asked Becky if there was a moment, a byproduct, if you will, from winning uh, the belt at WrestleMania that she'll always remember that when she's old and gray around her grandchildren that she'll tell them about. She told me a great story about, you know, connecting with her dad and brother right before the match. Is there something that will always stick with you about that? Not so much the, 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 the victory itself, but a byproduct of the victory, a conversation backstage, interaction, something with your family, someone reaching out to you. Is there something that you think you'll always remember about that moment? Yeah, I will remember certainly the uh, just the impact that it had. Uh, so that night when I got back to the room um, and my family had gone to bed, you know, I was just sitting there on the couch just alone in the dark and uh, just like bewildered at the fact that it actually happened because I was so, you get kind of jaded in this business because things change the drop of a hat. So me, I try not to get excited about anything until it actually happens, even with like, the actual match itself, I was like, you know what? There's always a chance they could change it at the last second. So all of a sudden, I didn't really like start getting, I guess, like nervous until um, the uh, the the they started playing like the the compilation package right before. So I'm in Gorilla getting ready to go out, and they're showing like all the step. I'm getting goosebumps even like thinking about now a year later. But they're uh, you know talking about like all the different the the route that it took to get here in the story because I thought it was done so well. Um, and all of a sudden then I was like, oh my God, like this is happening. Um, it's going to be really impactful. So when I got back to my room after the match, trying to go through my social media feed actually took me a legitimate 48 hours because so many people from all over the world were just so impacted by this moment. And I got so many videos of kids jumping up and down and, you know, crying and like tears of joy. And then the same videos of grown men jumping up and down in bars and hugging strangers, you know, um, and just talking about like how important it was to them, especially people of color that um, had never seen uh, an African born champion. So for me to be that guy that provided that emotional moment for so many people, uh, I take so much pride in that. And, and even like, you know, I always say like beyond race, my story was one of struggle and fighting so hard legitimately for 11 hard years, you know, fighting to get this opportunity. And I got one opportunity and I was able to, to, to capitalize on it. And what we do is supposed to be entertainment, right? It's not supposed to be real, right? But this was a very real moment where so many people were emotionally affected down to their souls, down to their cores. And for me to be the person that um, was able to provide that, and not just me, because there was a lot of people involved, obviously like Woods and E and my family, um, and even like the WWE universe, it was a moment where all of us collectively, um, like I just take a lot, of, a, a, pride, a lot of pride in being like the, the epicenter of that moment, you know, the catalyst for so many people to hopefully go off and follow their dreams. I'm just curious about the aftermath of that, looking back, because let's be honest, I know a lot of your fans didn't like the way your title reign ended. Are, yeah. are, are you able to look back on the past year with fondness, or, or do you have some feelings like, oh, I wish things would have gone a little differently? Oh, how, how do you feel no. about it now? Oh, it's, I mean, it's a little bit of both. I, I, I have a lot of fondness. Like I said, man, I, every single day, there's somebody that tells me how much they were impacted by that moment. And for me, it was more of like a bigger picture thing to be able to take the WWE Championship to Ghana, never been done before, getting off a bus there and seeing people in my parents' village like flock around me like I was Muhammad Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. You know what I'm saying? Like that is what actually matters. Like, unfortunately, uh, we don't get to book our own storylines. If it did, then everybody would be champion every single match. And I would have not had to wait 11 years, you know what I'm saying, to get a shot. So um, I understand that aspect of the business. Obviously, I, I would have wanted it to end a, a lot differently. 
I thought myself and Brock could have told a very emotional story, but um, it's not up to me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's out of my control. So um, it is kind of what it is. You know what I mean? Like that is the nature of the business. And you can either sit there and dwell on how, like how things didn't go your way, or you can move on and kind of try to start, you know, keep on doing impactful things and having an impact on this business. For me, that's the route that I go because I know this business doesn't last forever. I'm not going to be able to do this forever. My body's not going to hold up forever. But when I look back on it, I want to, I want to be able to say that, uh, you know, um, I maximized my time here. You know, I maximized uh, to the best of my ability, the impact that I was able to have. And there's really no room for you to like be negative and waste time, like stewing and being all upset. Oh, my title reign was only six months. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like what, how can I complain about that? There have been a lot of people who won't ever get that chance to be WWE champion. And I did have that chance, even if only once, um, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely happy about that aspect of it. Did, um, did you get to have a moment? I mean, I know on the podcast, you know, you guys all talk about Vince McMahon as, you know, he who shall, shall not be named. Yeah. And you kind of talk about it more as the three of you. But, you know, yeah. your experience isn't the same as Big E and Xavier exactly in that you've been there for a very long time, for a, multiple generations. Like, basically, right. at this point, you've now been there. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your personal relationship with Vince? And did you get to have a moment with him after the WrestleMania match where you guys got to kind of have a little moment of appreciation? Yeah, absolutely, man. I think uh, I've been lucky to have had a great relationship with Vince throughout my entire career. I was actually just talking about this uh, on another interview that I had. But, um, you know, uh, he's always had faith in me, you know, um, even from like my vignettes of uh, Kofi Kingston on the beach, Sam and everybody looks like there's trouble in paradise. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the one who like approved all those vignettes. We sat in a room and he read through them and he was like, okay, well, he wants these changes to be made. And um, we've always had a very good relationship. I've always been able to go to him with any kind of like concerns or suggestions that I might have. And um, particularly with the new day, he was one of our biggest supporters. So um, you know, he's, he's always had faith in us. Um, he was one of the only people that had faith in us as a group when everybody was making fun of us for running around together, always hanging out together, always trying to like dress alike and, you know, cut promos in the, uh, the, the pre-tape room and everyone's all, what, what are you guys doing? Oh, you so much hate, but not from Vince. You know, Vince was one of the people who believed in us, um, the entire way and I've always had a great relationship with Vince and even when I became WWE champion we had a lot more conversations um and um you know he he's always had that faith in me you know so the relationship has always been uh pretty strong so um yeah I'm, I'm always uh, fortunate for that because you know obviously without Vince like none of this this WWE world that we live in this dream that I've had as a kid like doesn't happen without his vision so for him to have the faith in me to uh, be WWE champion, for him to have the faith in the new day for us to host a WrestleMania, to host a WrestleMania, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, he's always had our backs and he's always been very supportive of us and I've always been thankful for that. Yo, Kofi, man, stay safe, take care of your family, be good. And uh, we look forward to watching you on uh, WrestleMania in a little bit. Right on, man. Yeah, you too. Always good to see your face, dog. Come on, true, true. I always true. Good to see your face. True, true. Please, <laughs> <laughs>